In this third video in our series of eye retouching, we're going to look at brightening and enhancing the eyes. Hi again, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this third in our series of videos on eye retouching, we're going to look at overall eye brightening and enhancement. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to zoom in here. And so basically the effect we're after is what you're seeing here. And we're starting at this point here. So let's go ahead and get into around 200% in our zoom. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at a couple of different ways of achieving that effect, but we're going to start off, uh, everything will essentially start with making a selection around the iris. So make sure that your elliptical marquee tool is selected and you've got the subtraction mode selected up at the top here. We're going to click down into the middle of the iris, hold down the option or alt key and drag out. Basically what you want is you want an oval that um, more or less encapsulates the iris, but doesn't go all the way to the edge. So something like this essentially, and then you can use your up and down uh, arrows, left and right arrows to just nudge that into place correctly. Now what we're going to do again with the elliptical marquee tool selected and subtraction mode on, we're going to click towards the top and hold down the option key and just drag out to create this sort of crescent moon shape. And that's really just going to negate that and, and pull that top section out of our selection. Now we're going to hit the Q key to bring up quick mask mode. We're going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to blur that selection so that uh, essentially we get a nice soft transition, but not so much that it bleeds out in towards the white portion of the eye. In this case, eight pixels give me a, it gives me a pretty good result. So clicking OK there, hit Q again to create a selection out of that. And now we're going to go into our adjustment layers and select the most basic one, which is going to be curves. So we're going to increase the value of our curve just to brighten it. You can go over a little bit because we can obviously scale that all back using opacity. So we've got that there. Now it's time to work on the other eye. We're again, just going to repeat the same process, clicking down in the middle of the iris, holding down option or alt, drag out, using our keys to position ourselves over the center. Again, clicking towards the top, holding down option. Now, in this case, what I actually want to do is I want to move it a little bit. So I'm going to right click and hit transform selection. And I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. There we go. Now again, I'm going to hit Q to bring up my quick mask mode, repeat my Gaussian blur and hit Q again. Now I'm going to select the mask on my curves adjustment layer. Make sure that white is our foreground color and we're going to hit option or alt delete. That's essentially just going to fill in that selection with white. Now we can deselect that zoom out and let's see where we're at. So as you can see, that's already looking a lot better uh, with very little time. So that's essentially one approach. Now, I often, uh, I usually don't brighten the whites of the eyes. It really depends on the situation. If you ever want to, what I will typically do is just uh, grab a very soft brush at a very low flow rate, make it a good size, you know, not, not too big, not too small. Make sure hardness is set to zero. And I'm just going to brush into certain areas gently towards the bottom of the eye. I never try to encroach on the top portion of the eye because there should be some shadow there uh, because the eyelashes and the fact that light is typically coming from the top down. So you want to kind of just respect that. Again, doing that a little bit here. The only time I really do this is there's sort of dark patches within the eye and I just want to brighten them up. Like down here, for example, it feels a little bit dark. So I might just fill that in a little bit. And again, just always zoom out to make sure that things look okay. In this case, as you can see, I think I've actually brightened this area a little too much. So we can just select black and just mask that back out. You shouldn't have a totally white eye. Uh, it just doesn't look natural. So always be careful when you're brightening the white of the eye. Okay. So that's essentially the approach using curves. Now we've got a couple of different adjustment uh, methods that we can use to brighten the eye. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold down the command key or the control key, click down on the mask for my curves adjustment, and I'm just gonna actually disable the curves adjustment. So now that we've repeated the selection, we don't have to do that again. We're gonna go in and uh, select the 
exposure uh, adjustment layer. And then from here, we're going to increase our exposure to around uh, plus one. And then we're going to increase gamma correction uh, or essentially, well, it's really decreasing gamma correction. So we're going to go from one to around 0.9. Now the difference here is it's going to create a much more contrasty brightening than the curves adjustment did. So if we actually uh, go between those two, you can see that this one doesn't bring out the darks as much, whereas this one will brighten the brights and darken the darks a little bit at the same time. You can achieve something similar using another adjustment layer. So let's just hit command again on any one of these two, make our selection again, and we're going to go into the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Again, we can raise our brightness a fair bit here and now increase our contrast at the same time. As you can see, it creates a pretty similar effect to this one. And it really just depends on what you think looks best. For me personally, I use the curves adjustment most of the time because I think it creates the most natural effect. This one here is almost going over the top. Now, one other thing that you really shouldn't do is you shouldn't brighten the whites using um, exposure or brightness contrast. Usually I'll just do that using curves or using a dodge and burn layer. So in this case, we would exclude uh, the whites from our selection if we were using either brightness and contrast or exposure. So that's essentially how you do that. Now, one last thing I'm going to cover is how to further play up the detail within the eye. So I'm just going to essentially use dodge and burn for that. Now I'm going to use my action for creating dodge and burn layers. And all that really does is it creates uh, a burn layer, which is a curves adjustment that is a curve going down. And we're going to use another one, which is the dodge layer with the curve adjusted going upwards. So we're just going to bring that up a little bit more. Now, both of these are masked out, so they're really not doing anything right now. So let's go ahead and zoom in to around 300% or so, maybe even more. We're going to select a brush that is around 50% hardness, flow rate of around 8%, 10%, and just shrink it down so that it just gets into the grooves within the eye. So it's basically the size of the details within the eye. And we'll start off with our dodge layer. Make sure that white is your foreground color. And you're basically just going to brighten up any areas that are bright and darken any areas that are dark. So essentially just the standard kind of uh, dodge and burn process here. And we're really just building contrast selectively within our eye. So any areas that you think could be brighter, you can just brighten up those areas. Don't go overboard on this because then again, it doesn't really look great, but that's what we have opacity for. We can make that adjustment later if we find that the effect is too much. Going into our burn layer now, I'm just going to darken up certain areas here. Again, you want to use fairly short choppy strokes to make this feel pretty organic. It's not a very precise process. The sort of more rough you are with this and more messy, the more natural it'll actually look. So you can also go around the eye with this just to darken that. Okay. So let's just zoom out to around hundred percent and we can toggle this dodge and burn layer off. And as you can see, it really just makes some of that detail pop within there. So when you combine this with the sharpening techniques we talked about in part one, uh, it creates a pretty dramatic effect in the eye. And of course, it's going to be up to you to vary the intensity of any of these adjustment layers and sharpening layers to make sure that you achieve an effect that is fairly natural looking. So that's it for this part. In part four, we're going to look at resizing and repositioning the eye. So to ensure you don't miss that, subscribe to the YouTube channel below and also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrant shot. Bye for now.